Yesterday, Manchester United drew with Bournemouth away from home and like the record that keeps on turning, the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, man like Cappy. So, Bournemouth 2, Manchester United 2. We're going to get into the performance in a second. But right now, it's time to get into our question of the day. Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. So, as many of you guys know who have been tuning in to the United Twins, ever since we've been doing question of the day, we present you with the question right here, right now. By the end of the episode, get your answers in the comment section and we will provide the answer. So here is today's question of the day. What was the British transfer record fee at the time that Manchester United paid in order to obtain the services of a certain club legend, Roy Keane, from Nottingham Forest in 1993? Now, we have three potential answers, with A being £3.75 million, B being £5.75 million, and C being £7.75 million. Get your answers in the comment section and by the very end of the episode or near enough to the end of the episode We will give you the answer Now of course on to the game once again 2-2 draw with Bournemouth at the Vitality Stadium It was a must win game for Manchester United and an absolutely poor performance away from home Cappy Goals from Dominic Solanke and Justin Cliver. Gave Bournemouth a, a 2-1 half-time lead. Bruno Fernandes ultimately scored twice in between to level and eventually rescue a point for us. When realistically, like I said before, we needed all three. Arguably, we didn't even deserve a point. Damn right. I'm sure a lot of you guys in the comments will, will share that same sentiment. Spurs lost 4-0 to Newcastle today. Newcastle are uh, now level. On points with us, Spurs are 10 points ahead. So they still have a nice little gap. But still, would have been nice to take advantage of that. Aston Villa play Arsenal at the Emirates, I believe, tomorrow. Oh, well, when this video comes out today on Sunday. So <laughs> you could see the frustration in Eric Ten Hag when journalists tried to get him to clarify whether he believed the top four race was over. He walked out at the end, and that may have been due to a multitude of reasons. I, I know the press conference was almost done at that point, and the journalist asked an extra question. But also, you could see the frustration creeping in when, you know, those those questions and those answers were there. I, I didn't say that when, when uh, I, I believe the person asked him, are you saying top four is over? He said, I didn't say that. You could see there was a bit of irritation there before the, the press officer said final question. So you can see the uh the disappointment. He's mark I'm I'm not sure if he's masking it pretty well because he comes out and presses and says, well, you know, the team did well to fight back. I'm sure they did, of course. Did well to fight back from being one 0 down, two one down, but ultimately these performances aren't good enough. And you know, as fans after watching every single game, how can you believe that the trajectory of this team will end up any higher than where we are right now? First and foremost, Manchester United, we were extremely lucky today considering that Bournemouth, especially in that first half, were finding our area with ease. Milos Kerekes hit the bar and was really active down that left-hand side. Our right-hand side, I'll hold on to that. Wait a second. Django, Sinestera, countless shots dragged wide from promising position. Should have done so much better, sure. <laughs> realistically. This is the realistic Cappy speaking today. So as I mentioned, our right-hand side is, you know, CM mentioned all the eventful stuff in the game. So we can... Dash that to one side and touch on post-game 
shenanigans. Oh, boy. <laughs> because what filtered around on social media, and me and CM clarified and, and fact-checked, right? Is that Alejandro Garnacho, who came off at halftime, Famagello liked a pair of tweets from another fan, representative of a fan channel, has been for many years criticizing Ten Hag substituting Garnacho and some post match press conference comments that subtly, not in our own words, in his words, subtly kind of take jabs at Garnacho, covering that entire situation. If nobody can understand the fact that there are serious cultural issues that continuously flare up whenever things go wrong. And that is the key, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever things go wrong, whenever stuff hits the fan, every time, it's time to start flaring up these issues again and, and making unknown things public within the media and the public eye. So if you're not seeing this, unfortunately, you're seeing the club through the wrong lenses. And that is the most blunt way I can say that. <laughs> Fish bait. On the hook, CM. Lower. Lower the hook into the water, into the river, into the sea, wherever you are. The fish bites. Reel it up. <laughs> you caught the latest victim. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Right. If this was the first time you were out at sea, you just caught your first fish. These things have been happening for years. And the problem is, this makes Manchester United, the club as a whole, look like a, a joke. Because they never handle these cases in-house. Nothing significant remains behind the scenes here. It doesn't matter how many times a manager says it, it doesn't matter how many times a board member, anybody says it within that institution. Hmm. Their words are disingenuous. It never comes to life. Everything comes to light. I want to add to your point as well, Cappy, because ultimately, hardly anybody on that pitch for Manchester United could take plaudits for their own individual performances. I believe the thing that hurt Garnacho is that he made or at least was involved in fatal mistakes in the build up to both of the goals we conceded. And overall, defensively, wasn't great with that entire right hand side, honestly. They were purposely targeted after Bournemouth quickly figured out the weaknesses. It tells me everything I need to know when people are playing the blame game, passing passing blame on like hot potato instead of broadening the thought processes and their thought processes, mm. sorry, and understanding that it takes a collective effort to succeed, but also the same to fail. Mm. This current group we have from manager to coaches, players mm. most definitely included, board who have been a part of this, ownership, ho oh, ho ho, Glazer ownership, mm. have contributed to years of failure. This is nothing new, man. Nothing new at all, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen Manchester United's yo-yo-like cycle and lack of accountability. That's why, upon reflection, I patiently waited after the last season concluded because the writing was already on the wall for me. We've seen the upturn. We've seen the honeymoon phase, the honeymoon season. And look where we are again. There has been plenty of talk about the manager. Pretty warranted in, in, in some aspects. Players as well who need to go, but we've already experienced this stuff. Up and down, left, right, all around. Right now, I'm looking at Ineos because they have an exponentially large job to execute. We've seen the employments and potential new names coming in. It was confirmed in a week that John Myrtle effective immediately will become the latest name to depart the club. But the more things change is the more they stay the same. That is the mantra stitched to the very fabrics, the fabrics of this football club, especially within the last decade plus. 
So, <laughs> what I mean by everything I've just said, summing it up, simply put, is you need to change the culture of this club. Forget referencing to what we once was. There's nothing that warrants the we are Manchester United line. So forget the referencing to what we were 10 plus years ago, like I said. Football has changed. Sports has changed. Heck, the world has changed. Tell me about it. I'm keeping a close eye with time permitted, of course on how these guys would transform a club down in the dumps, running with rats and mice on the underground. How do you look north, east, south, or west? Each direction presenting problems that worsen the more you choose to explore. Years of mismanagement and a lack of true ambition and innovation to remain or at least return to the top. Question of the day. That was me. Shut up. The time to reveal the answer to this episode's question of the day has arrived. But not before we wheel it back. What was the British transfer record fee at the time that Manchester United paid in order to obtain the services? of a certain club legend, Roy Keane, from Nottingham Forest in 1993. Now we have three potential answers, with A being 3.75 million pounds, B being 5.75 million pounds, and C being 7.75 million pounds. Hit a like on the vid, subscribe to the channel if you respect the tweet Now back to the video, answer the thing and hop in the chat Don't question the time. time! We ain't gonna waste no time here Let's get the answer on the screen Manchester United signed Roy Keane from Nottingham Forest For £3.75 million He would go on to become a pivotal figure in title winning sides Including becoming the club captain in 1990 seven mm. so ladies and gentlemen how did you fare in this episode's question of the day if you got the answer correct slap a one in the comments if you got the answer incorrect that's fine don't be ashamed to admit that you got something wrong because you will always learn from it slap a two in the chat if you got it incorrect but cannot help but think we've brought back question of the day after a couple of episodes where it was a little absent when you haven't even given it a go you haven't even tried to answer this question I'm annoyed you should be very ashamed of yourself but we move we move huh? it's cool we, we can forgive all of that stuff as long as you try again next time around but ladies and gentlemen We've got a few things to go through. Got a, got a few notes over here. So, of course, as always, make sure you go and check out the article. cm22ent.co.uk Dropped a match report. As always, if I'm not doing a watch along on this channel, you will see a match report at least an hour and an hour and a half or so up after the game. So, always look out for that. cm22ent.co.uk Woo! Next weekend, Coventry in the FA Cup semi-final. Hey, we'll see how that goes because the way Manchester United are playing right now, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and then we've got Sheffield United three days later on the 24th. So, another tough period. Games in quick succession. And again, Sheffield United have been by far the worst team in the Premier League this season. But in the Premier League, anything can happen. So let us know what you think or how you think those games are going to go in the comments as well. Just to do a light preview. Watch out for the vibe checks on the weekend, of course, before those games are in play, of course. For, so both the, What's going on here today? Before those games are in play, of course, the Coventry and the Sheffield one, we will both be putting out vibe checks. Cappy will be having his say 
and what is going to happen. Be sure to follow us. TikTok, you will see clips of these episodes all week long. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> and follow us on Twi Twitter. I always say Twitter. I'm trying to catch myself on that. But it will always be Twitter. For some reason to me, always be Twitter. Slash X, tm 22 ENT over there to have great conversations, plug other stuff, whether it's Twitch streams, second channel streams, and content or videos over here on CM22 ENT. So make sure you get a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies, and tell us about the subtle changes we've made to the to the setup, the studio. I hope you guys like it. Until the next time. We'll see you not sooner, bitch!